Here now is former Governor Mike Huckabee. He is a Fox News contributor. So that is the argument that we always hear that sanctuary cities are safer. But you look at all the stats that William pointed out. The Boston Globe, which is not exactly a conservative newspaper, finding that criminal aliens reoffended at a rate four times higher than what ICE had reported and higher than other offenders. Um, you know, what does this tell you, Governor? Well, it tells us that a sanctuary city is, in fact, safer if you're a criminal. But it isn't safer if you're a law-abiding citizen. And, and I don't, just don't understand why anybody can uh, go out there and justify the idea that a city government would set aside cooperating with federal law enforcement officials and say, we're not going to enforce a law. Now, let me ask you something. If a conservative advocated just the complete disobedience to a law because they didn't like it or didn't agree with it. Do you think that the left would say, well, that's okay, it's just your point of view? No. And, and the point is, there is a way to change a law if we think they're bad. It's called you elect legislators and they change it. So, yeah. Melissa, this has been a brewing situation. It needs to stop, and there should be no such thing as a sanctuary city. And I'm so proud of Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who says, we're not going to put up with it. Meanwhile, um, you look at the man in San Francisco who was arrested and he was from El Salvador. He was turned over to ICE officials. He was able to come back and sue the city. And they now have to pay him $190,000 for violating the sanctuary city law. I, I don't understand. But, the, but they're violating federal law with, this, with the city law. I mean, it just, it's so jumbled at this point. It's astonishing. It, it tells you two things. Number one, common sense isn't very common in San Francisco. And number two, this is why people have such a contempt for the courts as they have become. They've become uh, really in many ways a sanctuary for insanity. Yeah. To pay an illegal $190,000 because he got arrested? Yeah. Good heavens. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can't even get my arms around that, Melissa. No. How, do you, how do you justify that if you're the city of San Francisco? By the way, the same city. The same city that had a sanctuary city policy in place when Kate Steinle was right. savagely right. murdered yeah. in cold blood. I, I don't want to run out of time without asking you about your daughters in the spotlight for defending the president's tweet. Um, we want to get your reaction. Let's play this little soundbite here. I think he's been very clear that when he gets attacked, uh, he's going to hit back. I think the American people elected somebody who's tough, who's smart, and who's a fighter. And that's Donald Trump. And I don't think that it's a surprise to anybody that he fights fire with fire. So, Governor, this is what struck me. She was attacked personally all over the place, on Twitter, yes. everywhere, for doing her job. And she was attacked personally and as a woman, even though she says people attack me all the time. And I don't say, oh, no, don't do that because I'm a woman. But this response to where they say the president and whatever you think of what he did, but they're saying, you know, he, he's attacking. And then you attack a woman in response who's doing her job. What do you think of that? What, uh, the hypocrisy. A double set of rules here. One is applied to conservatives. One is applied to liberals. And, and that, that sounds rather blunt, but I don't know any other way to put it. Sarah, my daughter, was viciously attacked. Viciously. Not only yesterday and after the... But, but even well before, by the very host of MSNBC, Joe and Mika, they called her many things on air, and she didn't run out and say, oh, they're sexist. Well, she's a professional. She understands that that's part of her job is to take the incoming. But every time somebody points out about Donald Trump's tweets, which I think were sort of his saying, I'm fed up to hear and I won't take yeah. anymore, they should, they should have to listen to the specific things that he was called on national television by two people yeah. pretending to be journalists. He was called a schmuck, a goon, a thug, a liar repeatedly. Yeah. He was called insane, unfit. Now, put that together, and then you can say maybe he shouldn't have tweeted some of that, but I, I think most people would say enough is enough. There was so much bad behavior to go around. What struck me was the only person who was doing their job and was completely straight about it was your daughter. And she was attacked mercilessly. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, and, and she, she did nothing but her job. It just is astonishing to me. Governor, thanks for coming on. Appreciate your time.